Two adventurers, Muammar Yilmaz, a Franco-Turk, and his German friend Milan Bilman, took up the great challenge of going around the world in 80 days without any cash in hand. These two partners will engage in a race against time to conquer the world with no money by traveling through 19 different countries over four continents and covering over 46,000 kilometers. To pull off this crazy feat, Milan and Muammar can only count on people's kindness. They set off on an adventure off the beaten tracks to prove to the whole world that there are still good people on our planet. Morning. It's uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. We're doing push-ups. Push-ups. <laughs> Milan's doing push-ups. Today's the day. Our dream is coming true. We've taken on a crazy challenge of traveling the world in 80 days, like Phileas Fogg and Passepartout in the Jules Verne book. But we've added another layer. We're going to do it without money and without knowing where we'll sleep. We're carrying 10 kilos each, some clothes, two cameras, and most importantly, a water filter. We're in Paris. It's September 9th at exactly 9.09. Hello, schöne Grüße. Pardon, hoş geldiniz. We are the optimistic traveler. Milan Bilman. Muhammad Yilmaz. And now we have 80 days to make a trip around the world without money. And the whole journey is about improvisation. And we want to show to the world there is good people everywhere. 80 days on the clock. Our adventure begins. Bonjour. Hi, how are you? Good, and you? Good, we're travelers. Oh, yeah? Do you think it's possible to go around the world in 80 days? Yes, it's possible to go around the world in 80 days. Totally possible. If you believe it, everything's possible. Even in math, a positive times a positive is the same as a negative times a negative. It's all positive, right? You have to keep your attitude positive. That's good. I don't know what highway you're looking for, but from here, we're going to Strasbourg. Strasbourg, yeah, so take the road to Bordeaux. Bordeaux's on the Rouen Highway. Well, to get to Strasbourg, we'll take the Eastern Highway. Good luck. But for now, we're going to give hitchhiking a try. Good morning, sir. How's it going? Going well. Are you working? Yeah. Uh, are you busy? Any chance you want to do us a favor? Hello, sir. Hitchhiking is a failure. But Afida, our first kind soul, gives us two metro tickets. And from here, we have to get to the highway. Could you take us? Yes? Cool! We good. Yes. This car will get us close. We're going to try and convince him to take us to the highway because it's already 2 p.m. and we haven't even left Paris. We need to get moving. We're coming! In Bercy, Kevin agrees to help us. He drops us off at the highway's first gas station. Ciao! How do you feel, Muammer? Great. We're in a great spot to get to Strasbourg. But the wait is long. Very long. You want to ride to Strasbourg? I can't. I'm taking the next exit. Milan? Paul? Paul? Milan? Pleasure. This doctor in training is the first to give us a ride. Where are you going after this? After you get to Strasbourg? Germany? Got it. Paul drops us off at Reims. Razek then gets us to Metz. By our estimates, traveling 300 kilometers each day should get us around the world on time. We're on track. Maybe we could come with you. Sure, if you want. Wow, what's your name? Bernard. Bernard? Pleasure. Bernard, nice meeting you. Y you think it's possible? To take you with? To go around the world in 80 days without money. It'll be tough. <laughs> tough, why? <laughs> with help from people like, like you. Yes, but how will you change continents? Suspense. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Today we hit our first goal, 500 kilometers in one day. That's good. However, the greatest challenge... But you'll have to change continents. Yay, we're in Strasbourg! 
First step, check. Thanks, Bernard. Can we get a ride with you? No, we're not in service. It was the last train. It's against policy. Sorry. In Strasbourg, we spread our wings and come across two angels, Natalie and Gina. With a backpack? So, Natalie, now it's your turn to inspire us a bit, and she was around Strasbourg. What do you say? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Cool. The two friends trust us off the bat. But just like that, everyone picks you up, right? When you hitchhike? I mean, look at you. Look at of us. Course. Look at you. <laughs> Any chance we could couch surf at your place? In my place? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I have a guest room you can use. No problem at all. No way. Can you come too? <laughs> yes, yes. To make sure she's safe? Really? Cool. Yeah. To thank Gina, Natalie, and the restaurant owner for the delicious food, Milan puts on an improv show with his Diablo. He's a professional juggler, and I must say, the ladies love it. Thank you, Natalie and Gina. Thank you. Thank you, chef. <laughs> Can you smell the wood? Wait for us. As she promised, Gina welcomes us in her home. This is your room. Wow. This is the living room. It's also my mother's room. <sighs> Gina and Natalie are students and want to know more about our challenge. After a nightcap, we're sound asleep within minutes. This time, our mission is to get to Stuttgart by Highway 8. And then turn the page, we continue the H to Ulm, past Ulm and towards Munich. We couldn't leave Strasbourg without saying goodbye to our new friend Natalie. What a great name for our guide. <laughs> Do you think we'll make it? You'll make it. You're young, you're handsome, you'll figure it out. I'm sure you'll make it. We're leaving France for the next 79 days, and Thomas takes us across the Rhine, the last visible border. Germany! We just managed to cross borders, and we're gonna stop at a petrol station in Germany. Okay, that's it. I, I don't speak, uh, across the border, we have no choice. We have to speak German. For Milan, it's easy, but for me, it's a little more complicated. Hello? Hello? How are you going? Hello? Hello? How are you? I'm, a, I'm on a business trip and I cannot take anyone. It's possible. With it's always me. possible. Yeah, yeah. If you want. I want to introduce you, my friend, Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. What are you trying to do? You want to see the world? Yes, we're going around the world okay. with no money and no tent. Wake up every morning and we have no idea with whom we're going to eat, with whom we're going to drive, with whom we're going to sleep. We just, that's also the name. We call each other optimistic travelers. Trudy's enchanting smile is delighting. No surprise given she's a former actress. After being suspicious at first, she progressively opens up. Yeah, so it's your second day today. Yes, what it's like being with the optimistic travelers. It makes me want to do the same thing because I think it's really interesting and it's a good idea. The nouvelle um, ideas and new um, countries, I think you will that will happen, I'm sure. Perhaps not in 88 days. <laughs> we get multiple rides from people, and Michel is the last one who helps us finish our journey to Munich. I was, I was at the Luxembourg and France uh, border. Long way. Yeah. How Today many kilometers is it? 860. Oh, 860, and now yeah. 200 more. 
Yeah. Woo! Uh, huh? She loves you very much, yeah? Yeah. But you, but you know what? One of the biggest qualities a human, a human can have is to smile and to be like, like to be optimistic. Be like, yeah, yeah, I'm optimistic. Like, yeah, that's my life. Yeah. 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 Michel's a salesman who's often on the road and eager to get home to his family. That's just possible in Germany. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was nice to, to meet you. <laughs> and actually, I, I will check you on, uh, on your Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> in the center of Munich, we try our luck in a Mexican oh, restaurant. Hola, hola. Hello. Hello. I'm Kevin. We have two challenges. Find something to drink, to eat, and find a place to sleep. <laughs> we can give you something to drink. Yeah. Be careful. Are you okay? Are you right? Yes, he is so happy. <laughs> and something to eat. Oh, yeah. How you travel? Too luxurious. I'm at a hotel. I'm an asshole. She doesn't show, but she's a five star hotel bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the second one. Yeah, man. No, it's good. <laughs> We're having a good time. We're hoping one of them can put us up for the night. No such luck. It's past midnight, and we still need to find lodging. Things could be better, but we're still optimistic. Hello, French people. We're going around the world in 80 days without money. Can, can you help us for tonight? If not, we have to sleep on the streets. Well, the thing is, we could help, but we'd get a fine for that. Milan. Milan. All good. We've got a bed. We convinced Marie. She agrees to house us in her student dorm, even though it's forbidden. We try to be discreet so she doesn't get in trouble. If you need help uh, with anything... No worries. Can you turn that off? <laughs> Tonight, we couldn't find a place to sleep in Germany. Yeah, we did. Yes, but with French people. So what? We're still in Germany. Earlier, you were defending Germany. Yes, because Germany is an incredibly diverse place. There are 15 million foreigners in Germany. 20% of the people here are expats. So what I'm trying to say is that people here are really incredibly like... Good night. We have a roof over our heads. That's all that counts. Our adventure is just starting. We have to see what happens and go with the flow. But sleeping on the floor reminds me of bad nights camping. Because sleeping on the floor... Oh, Miguel. Merci beaucoup. Good luck. Ciao. Ciao. How are you? Before leaving, we returned to Taco Libre. The night before, they'd promised us a sandwich for the road. Enjoy, my friend. Our stomachs are full as we set out across town. And we soon meet a young couple that takes us across the countryside at 200 kilometers an hour to the sound of German music. Okay, we're at the uh, Austrian border. It's 7 p.m., so getting to Vienna will be a bit difficult. We're running behind. We need to get moving at all costs. My sister's scared because you're two men and we're two women alone. But I'm not scared. And I have a knife. And I don't. <laughs> okay, let's go. Anna takes a liking to us. But Irina, her older sister, isn't convinced. Is Salzburg okay for you? The mood in the car is pretty gloomy. I'm scared. I'm terribly scared. I don't want any problems. I have two kids. Two kids alone in Germany. 
We try to reassure the sisters, but to no avail. After a few kilometers, Irina asks us to get out of the car, kindly. Wow! In Linz, we get to stay with Ali, an Afghan with a complicated past who saves us from a night on the streets in the rain. What's your name? Habib. Habib? Yeah. Sorry, you were sleeping. Oh, it's no problem. Habib, you are also Afghan? Yeah. Um, huh? What? 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 I'm coming in, um, like, uh, Russia. Russia. Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, Moscow, Moscow, um, Ukraine, Ukraine, like, Hungary. That I can in like uh, one year. One year? One year. How much you pay? Two thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And you pay twenty two thousand dollars for yeah. the passport and all. I just came directly. Are you alright? Yeah, like he came in one year, so I came like in two days. We share stories about our lives and we're moved by the troubles our hosts have experienced. Habib was a translator for the American army. He was forced to leave his country for fear of his life. Taking it all in, we realize our adventure is nothing compared to their search for freedom. The next day, after a nice breakfast, Ali drops us off at the gas station on the edge of town. Since one week, there's bomb. Two trucks like that, truck, over bomb inside, going to city. City, boom, oh, every city is good. Every city. And your family is? The, my family is good. My family is a little bit, my house far from city. It's not in Lena, sorry. No, 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 no. No. Okay. No, I don't want trouble with the police. Oh, okay. Ali, with his heart of gold, stays with us until someone else agrees to pick us up. Oh, hello. 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 <laughs> Where are you going? To Vienna. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Why you change? Uh, first you say no, and after you say yes, why? I didn't want to go to Vienna. I wanted to go to Linz. But I realized I could go see my grandma in Vienna. So we came back to pick you guys up. We figured you were harmless, so we decided to help. And I'd already talked to him. Yeah, he was afraid. <laughs> a little bit. Because, oh, oh, and I, what, what do you want from me? What? I don't understand. <laughs> we have to Vienna. Vienna. <laughs> Rebecca and Lorenzo are both from Romania and just glowing with positivity. Their enthusiasm is contagious. Today, we trade one couple for another. Two hitchhikers first, on their way to a festival. Then Ali and Karina, two friends off to discover Budapest. Ali is Turkish, Karina is Hungarian, and the two of them love to party. Want some Afghan candy? <laughs> Is it magic candy? <laughs> oh, these two must be waiting for me. It's photo, photo. Be sure to film this. <laughs> for once, we get to town before sunset and can enjoy the last rays of light on the Danube. Tonight, the internet will be our savior. We can give you a passport. I'm a private cameraman of Milan Bilman around the world. Two charming ladies help us contact Philip, a Frenchman with a friend who can possibly put us up. We wander the streets to meet Philip. I called my friend, but he's not answering. So my wife's getting you a hotel room for tonight. Yes, I'm serious. No, Milan! This is the chain bridge, one of Budapest's seven bridges. What you see up there is the Var. Var means castle in Hungarian. 
In my opinion, that's where you get the best view of the city. Philip shows us his city and we finally meet his friend Hervé, who generously lends us a large apartment with a washing machine to boot, a welcome sight for our dirty clothes. The next day, Philip takes us to the umpteenth gas station. The nearby restaurant is full of truckers. Hello. Hello. Hi, are you truckers? Yes. Where are you headed? First, I'm going to Turkey. Turkey? And then? Then Iraq. Muhammad, as always, um, connected with the Turkish people, and we found... I touch. I touch. How long have you been doing this job? About seven years now. And what's it like being a trucker? It's pretty hard. What makes it complicated is being so far from home. You leave your wife, your kids and go. I have a 28-month-old baby. That's the hardest part. It's hard to be apart from loved ones. Every day we get further and further from our families. But unlike ITAC, we're a duo that can encourage each other and lean on one another. With ITAC, we'd planned to travel as far as Turkey, but that was before we ran into an unexpected traffic stop. Uh, I didn't quite follow. Under battering rain, we're forced to follow the police to the station. ITAC has to pay a 600 euro fine and his truck will be impounded for two days. ITAC didn't pay the mandatory highway road tax, so we're following the police. They made us get out of the truck, 600 euros. That's more than half his salary. We've crossed the border. We're in Romania. We're in Romania, welcome. In the middle of the night, we get lucky again. Nico and Catalina, a Romanian couple, take us to Bucharest. It was so easy until now. <laughs> now we need to have some more challenges. We drive all night with several stops when we get lost. In the car, we sleep as best we can, trying to keep an eye on the driver to make sure he's always awake. In Bucharest, Aurelian, a professor and philosopher, takes us to the local youth hostel. Little Bucharest. This is where we will sleep tonight. Five, six? To find food, we take advantage of the street festival in the neighborhood. Milan does his thing and we draw a crowd. Gilbert, one of the spectators, is impressed enough to invite us to eat and go dancing. Hello. He, uh, he wants to invite you to dinner. Yeah. It's okay? It's amazing. Gilbert invited us to eat, drink, and tango. Unbelievable. This is crazy. Here, check this out. Once more, we have to leave town. That's the most complicated. It's the Turkish community that comes to the rescue. Luckily, I speak the language. Niat offers to be our guide, and then his friend Mehmet takes over. 
Hello? Hello. How are you? Where are we going? Istanbul. Istanbul. He's taking us to Istanbul. Really? No. I'm going in 10 days. He's taking us there in 10 days. At the station, Mehmet pays for our bus tickets. We're really surprised. He wants to know how we plan to pay. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Thank you very much. It's going on my heart, really. Uh, on the road again. Istanbul. We cross Bulgaria and in the middle of the night, we enter Turkey. In three hours, we'll be in Istanbul. Europe is behind us. We're at the gateway to Asia. With over 3,000 kilometers under our belts, we're on track and confident about what's to come. After all, there's only 43,000 kilometers to go. Bienvenue Istanbul, Police! Police! Police!